Good morning. We've had some uh, technology challenges this morning, but I think we've overcome. Uh, we've come here to worship, so let's go ahead and stand as we get ready to, and sing The Bond of Love. We are one in the bond of love. We are one in the bond of love. We have joined our spirit with the spirit of God. We are one in the bond of love. Let us sing now. Today's scripture reading is from Psalm 37, 1 through 4. Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of Let's pray together. Father, we love you so much and we're so grateful for all that you do and the way you bless us, the way you help us, the way you guide us. And we've had a great week, Lord, in Vacation Bible School, and we're grateful for all the kids that came, for the families that brought them, and especially for the ones that made it this morning. So we just ask your special blessing upon them. All of us come before you, Lord, with different struggles and different things laying on our hearts. Help us. Guide us. Lead us into more peace. We need more of you, Lord, so we're asking for that. So maybe sometime during the service, Lord, you just pour yourself out upon us that we might be overwhelmed with your love, your power, your grace, your presence. And Lord, that you would bless these people, that you would let them know that you love them. And most of all, that we all would leave this place knowing that Jesus Christ died for us and rose from the grave that all of us might be in your family as your children. We thank you for that truth, and we say it all in that name above all names, the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you, and you can be seated. And uh, yes, we had a real good time this week in Vacation Bible School. We averaged about 38, and uh, we are grateful for that. It's such an increase over these last few post-COVID years, and uh, so it's really, we are very grateful. Um, later on in the service, the kids will be making a little bit of a presentation, so um, that's coming up. But uh, wanted to let you all know we got a few things coming up here, and... Uh, this afternoon, deacons, we got a meeting at 5 o'clock and we got a business meeting at 6.30 tonight. Um, business meeting packets are out in the foyer if you want one of those. I do need to give you a heads up, okay? Told y'all I'm having surgery next month and we got a vacation, so I'm here this Sunday and then next Sunday. And then all of that stuff starts, okay? So that's how close that is. Please be reading your messenger newsletters, either picking them up in the foyer or in the church office or checking checking your email for them. Uh, there'll be information in there to kind of help you keep up with what's going on while I'm out, okay? And uh, want to also remind you this week on Wednesday at 1130 down here at Miller's Barbecue at Saratoga and Weber, there will be the card sign-in party. And then on Wednesday evening, six o'clock is potluck, followed by the Bible study and prayer meeting. So if you would like to come to either one of those, you are welcome to. So uh, keep all that in mind. And then um, 
We are glad you're here. If you're here for the first time or the first time in a while, we got a little guest card here on the front flap of our bulletin. It would, we would be grateful if you would fill that out and drop it in the offering plate when it comes by later. It tears right off. And uh, we'll try and get you more information about our church. You can also share prayer requests, update your emails, phone numbers, those kind of things using this form. It's very helpful to us, okay? So thank you very much. And let us go around and welcome one another into the Lord's house. make it back to our places. We will continue to stand as we make it back to our places. And join me in singing the servant song. We are travelers on a journey, fellow pilgrims of the road. We are here to help each other walk the mile and bear the load. I will hold the Christ light for you in the night time of your fear. I will hold my hand out to you, speak the peace you long to hear. Sister, let me be your servant, let me be like 
Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. Brother, let me be your servant. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. I will weep when you are weeping, when you laugh, I'll laugh with you. I will share your joy and sorrow till we've seen this journey through. When we sing to God in heaven, we shall find such harmony. Born of all we've known together, of Christ's love and agony. Normally at this time we would let the children go, but we're going to wait for the children until after the VBS presentation. So join with me as we sing Sweet, Sweet Spirit. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know that it's a spirit of the Go ahead and be seated. We are so glad you're here. But if you were with us in vacation Bible school last week, whether as a worker or an attendee, a, one of our students, come on up here. It is your time. All right? And we'll turn it over to our director, Alicia Bird. Good morning, Travis Baptist Church. First of all, I want to thank all of our workers who put in countless amounts of hours into getting everything ready for this past week, um, for the kids who showed up, and for each and every one of you who put your prayers into praying for each of our workers and each of these children throughout the week. It was quite the blessing. On average, we had around 34 students each night with maybe two or three very about plus minus two of the three people. So we kept very consistent throughout the week. Um, the kids had lots of fun in their games, their crafts, their story time. Um, we were really blessed this year. We had lots of people coming in and volunteering. We had lots of people come in and help tear down yesterday. As you can see, we got about 98% of everything taken down with maybe an exception here and there in a couple places. Um, we reached a lot of students. Um, we were very blessed by our sponsors, um, HEB, the fire department, um, fun trackers, the Museum of Science and History, uh, the Corpus Christi Hooks and the Corpus Christi Ice Rays. The kids got really excited for their prizes that they got this past week. Thank you for those who donated gifts for that as well. Um, we also got to see the wonderful blessing of 
many of the students end up getting prizes multiple times throughout the week and a lot of them ended up saying hey I already got a prize this week can you redraw so someone else can get that gift it was a beautiful sign of God's love that those children are showing each other to give each other chances um, all of our stuff, as you can see, is pretty much taken down. A bunch of our material is now going to go over to Brownsville um, to go ahead and do a couple of VBSs at about two or three different churches over there. And then our VBS material will be heading down to Mexico with the group. So our stuff, is, our reach is still going out. We are still doing things. We have still are continuing our impact of VBS. We will be continuing to reach out to these children to keep trying to invite them and their families back in. So thank you for everything that you did for us. Now I want to go ahead and have everyone join us. We have a couple of songs from VBS um, for us to go ahead and do together. Uh, our leaders and students, please help out with doing the dances since you were here to see them. There's two kingdoms, but they're not the same. There's only one king who will never change. There's a kingdom of lies, fear and shame, and a kingdom of truth where Jesus reigns.
Now, children three to 12 years old are excused for Children's Church. Only been doing this every Sunday for 16 years. I always get out of order. Um, we're glad to have you today. And one of the things we do here is we take time in the middle of the service to pray. We feel that worship is not just a spectator thing, but we we all need to be in touch with God during the service. That we take this time to speak with Him, to hear from Him. We open our altar up. That means if you want to do something that may help you feel a little bit closer to God, come down to this area here where the steps are and pray. Uh, it, it's a way of you symbolically saying to the Lord, Lord, I want to get as close as possible. I am coming to you. Let's not just be caught up in our common everyday things. Let's take a step. Let's tell God, I'm serious this time. Maybe you're struggling with things. Maybe there's finances and job troubles, relationship, these kids. What are we going to do with them? We need the Lord. We need Him in our homes. We need Him in our streets. We definitely need Him in our hearts. So maybe you want to come and pray at this time. Our deacons, we'll have a couple deacons up here that can pray with you if you want someone to pray with you. And so let's bow our heads. And we'll pray silently for a few moments, and then we'll lead it. But you can come on up here and pray if you want to. your hands upon him and strengthen him and provide for them lead him lord and for janie god that you would do grant the desires of their heart as they delight in you we ask in the name of christ pray lord for God we love to see you at work we love to see your mighty hand doing great and wonderful things we love to see you providing that money at the last minute to pay a bill to provide food for a family we love when someone just happens to hear a song or hear someone say something that lifts them out of the the the, the rut they've been in we love it when you open up a new friendship open up a new opportunity when you do something that just reminds us, this was all you, Lord. So we're grateful for all the things you did this week in helping us meet new friends, in helping us share about you, and in, in, in watching your hand work in people's lives. We're praying right now for all these kids who came to our Bible school last week, that every one of them, you would watch over them, guard them, keep them safe. As they grow up, they're gonna have hard choices to make. We pray that you'll guide them in this. The ones that are coming to know you as Savior, Lord, we learned about spiritual armor. Help them to be strong in you, Lord, and in the power of your might. Remind them constantly that there is a shield of faith that can quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. There is a breastplate of righteousness, a belt of truth, the, the shoes of the gospel of peace. There is a sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God and a helmet of salvation. And Lord, whatever the enemies and whatever life and whatever whoever else, whatever they throw at us, Lord, to stop us, to slow us down, your armor, your spirit, your power is more than enough to overcome. We've been made more than conquerors because of you, Jesus. 
And so we want to rejoice in that and help these kids to grow up knowing that, that they've got power in Christ no matter what their age is. And Lord, for their parents to guide them, give them wisdom, give them patience, help them, Lord, as they struggle because they have issues also with work, with providing, with relationship and, and God in all of them. They need you too. And remind them, that same shield of faith is good at whatever age you are. That helmet of salvation will always protect us. That shield will always quench the fiery darts of Satan. Lord, we are, we are well equipped because greater is He that's in us than he that's in the world. We stand on Your promises and we believe You. So God, reach down and help us. Help us to see what You're doing. Do miracles for us, Lord. Let us see something done in a way we never expected. Heal that person. Re restore that relationship. Bring someone to Christ who they thought was hopeless. Let them know today, Lord, use us to represent you, to let those shoes of peace carry us to share your truth with others. God, help us to be your witnesses. Help us to represent you. And just remind us, Lord, what a blessed thing it is to be your child. Again, we thank you for all those who helped, for all those who sweated and sacrificed, for all those who are still tired from last week. Bless your holy name and enable us to bounce back and do even more. Work through us, Lord. Let this city know that Jesus loves Corpus Christi. We say it all in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Join me in singing, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. this time let us stand for our offering and we'll sing the family of God. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood. Joy as we travel this song for I'm part of the family the family of God I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God I've been washed in the fountain cleansed by his blood as we travel this song for I'm part of the family the family of God Amen. 
pray with me, church? Dearest Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together, Father. Thank you for all the blessings you give us. Thank you for, the, for being there for us, even when we don't see you, Father. You're always there. Continue to bless us. Continue to have mercy on us and forgive us our sins. And bless this tithing that we give, Father. May it be just out of obedience and the love for you and not feel that it's an obligation. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. book of Colossians chapter 4. The book of Colossians in your New Testament. You've got Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians. Let me see. Then Galatians, then Ephesians, then Philippians, and then Colossians. It's in your New Testament. Uh, we will be in chapter 4. We'll be reading verses 2 through 14 in a minute. Um, this is our last message out of Colossians. We started this thing in February, if my records are right. And uh, our 16th or 17th Sunday in it, something like that. So we haven't done this in a long time, gone through a whole book on Sunday mornings like this. But I hope it's been a blessing to you. But we're going to read this morning verses uh, Colossians chapter 4, verses... Uh, 2 through 14. This series on Colossians has been, we subtitled it, Jesus the Missing Peace. The book of Colossians has been about Christ above all. That the people in Colossians had been told, well, it's good that you have Jesus, but you need Jesus and all our rules and regulations. You need Jesus and better knowledge of the universe and these kind of things. And, and, and what Colossians is telling us, no, is we are complete in Christ. We've got everything we need in Him. And whatever you're looking for out there, whatever that emptiness is, Jesus fills that spot. And we learned in the early part of the book, the first couple chapters, tells us a lot about Jesus, about who He is. He's the Creator. He's God the Son. He is there from eternity past. He bought our redemption on that cross. He took us from darkness to light, from, from, from evil to love. He's done all of this for us. And then we come to chapter 3 and it says, But if you've been risen with Christ, then seek those things that are above. And he starts telling us how in light of what Jesus has done then, this is how you ought to live, how you ought to have relationships, how you ought to behave and all that. And we come down to chapter 4 now. And a lot of times in these short little books in the New Testament, there's a whole lot of names. 
And we got a lot of names in this one. But rather than just saying goodbye, I think the Holy Spirit, who inspired the Word of God to be written, has his reasons for putting this in here. And the reason, I think, is we need each other. We need them. These other people in your church and these people even from other places. So we're going to stand and we're going to read Colossians chapter 4, verses 2 through 14. If you're physically capable, if it's not too uncomfortable, would you stand please for the reading of God's Word. Colossians chapter 4, verse 2. Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Meanwhile, praying also for us, that God would open to us a door for the Word, to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in chains, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom to those who are outside, redeeming the time. Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer one on each one. Tychicus, a beloved brother, faithful minister, and fellow servant in the Lord, will tell you all the news about me. I am sending him to you for this very purpose, that he may know your circumstances and comfort your hearts. With Onesimus, a faithful and beloved brother who is one of you, they will make known to you all things which are happening here. Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, greets you. With Mark, the cousin of Barnabas, about whom you received instructions. If he comes to you, welcome him. And Jesus, who is called Justice, these are my only fellow workers for the kingdom of God who are of the circumcision. They have proved to be a comfort to me. Epaphras, who is one of you, a bondservant of Christ, greets you always, laboring fervently for you in prayers, that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. For I bear him witness that he has a great zeal for you and those who are in Laodicea and those in Hierapolis. Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word and your blessing. And thank you for our brothers and sisters. Help us to see them as the gifts that they are. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. Thank you. So, we need each other. We need them. Those who are inside, those who are outside. One thing a church is, is it's not a building. This building um, is about as old as I am. And... Uh, it's just concrete and steel. Travis Baptist Church is sitting in the building. It's the people. The thing that makes us a church is not the building. Now, we get upset. That building, I love it. It's meant so much to me over the years. Yes, it has, but goodness sakes, this building is, is rocks when you get down to it. The church is flesh and blood. People, breathing human beings, young, old, of every race, of every kind. The people who gather here in Christ's name, they are the church. So it doesn't matter in the long run if the building falls apart as long as the ministry keeps going on through the people. We've got to always remember, church is about people. And we need the people. So we come down here in the end of Colossians, and in one of these lists that's kind of typical in the little books that Paul writes in our New Testament that the Holy Spirit inspires him to do, is a long list of names thanking and encouraging, and, and, and it does several things for us. We ask, oh, it's kind of like genealogies in the Old Testament, kind of boring. Well, those are there for a reason, too. But right here, right now, I want you to stop and think. All these names that pop up in this chapter were actual people who lived and worked with the Apostle Paul who wrote this. They were people involved in the ministry of Jesus Christ. They are just as real as you and me. Back in 2020, just ahead of COVID, you guys let me go to Israel. And that was a wonderful thing. And that was the most overwhelming thing was to sit there and go, they walked right through here. Jesus came down this road that goes from Nazareth to Galilee. It's kind of a shortcut because the highway is all winding through the mountain. But Jesus walked this road. Jesus came down through this town. He may well have served that, that uh, uh, bread to 5,000 on this hillside. He may well have been right here on that morning when he fed the fish to Peter and the other disciples after his resurrection. And he asked Peter, do you love me three times? Oh, just putting a, a face and a place on all those things there made it feel so real. And so we must always remember when we see these names... Just like when you go to the mall or H-E-B or to work, that's a real person. 
these names like Tychicus and, and, and Aristarchus and all these other guys, flesh and blood, your brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. And we need them. And we need you too. So let's stop and think about the kind of people we need. We need the people that are, are you ready for this? Outside the church. Wait a minute. I thought you were going to talk about, you know, we sing, blessed be the tie that binds. We are one in the bond of love. You say, I'm so glad to be a part of the family of God. I thought you were going to talk about all this nice, good people here. But he starts out in verse 2 asking us to pray. Verse 2, chapter 4. Continue earnestly in prayer with vigilance and thanksgiving. In it with thanksgiving. It means be praying for us. Why should we be praying? Praying for us that God would open to us a door for the word to speak the mystery of Christ for which I'm in chains. What are we saying here? We're saying he wants us to be praying. Why? Praying for opportunities for us to reach the people outside the church. Because you know what? If we don't keep reaching people outside our church, we quit being a church. The reason we exist is not for us. The reason for we exist is to become disciples of Christ and then make more disciples of Christ. Make a follower, become a follower of Christ and, and lead others to follow him. We can never say this is just for us and our kind of people. It's so much fun when we have vacation Bible school because we get people from nearly every side of town. It's always crazy. We'll have folks from, you know, right in the neighborhood here in the apartments. Then we'll have somebody from over in the uh, kind of towards the university. And we'll have people out towards King Crossing. And there's these there's a couple streets over on the west side that seems like we always get a couple kids coming from over there. I don't know why, but praise the Lord, we get to minister to people like that. Pray. For opportunity to witness. Verse 2, or verse 3 rather, praying for us that God would open to us a door for the word. That's what we did do in Bible school. Hey, we get your kids out of the house for a little while and we're going to have games, we're going to have crafts, we're going to study the Bible, we got to present the gospel to them, we got to teach them about spiritual armor, about hopefully as they grow, making better choices. We had opportunity this week. What a wonderful thing. Guess what? We want more opportunities. I want each and every one of us praying, just like he says here, praying for us that God would open to us a door for the Word to speak the mystery of Christ. I'm in prison for this, Paul says. I'm in chains. You know what? Don't quit praying for me to have more chances. There's going to be guards. There might be a lawyer or two run by. I may be in a courtroom. I may get to give my testimony. But Lord, keep giving me chances, opportunities. All right. I mean, yeah, we had our first vacation Bible school meeting in February, about the time we started Colossians. <laughs> we had our first Bible school meeting back then, and we started spending up. I don't know that I've had, I've had one Saturday off, I think, in the last, about the last eight weeks, because my wife had me up here. We were cutting out cardboard. We were hanging things on walls. We were lifting heavy things and moving them around and all that. And then last week, boy, all of us, 12-hour days, because you went to work, then you came up here, and we were eating dinner at 9.15. And we're tired. Or are we? What if God keeps giving us opportunity? What if God has now opened up more and more doors for us to share about His Word to maybe people that didn't come to Bible school? To people met man, man, why are you so tired this week? Why are you so happy? Because Bible school's over, that's why. Why was you doing that? Well, let me tell you, I do it because of Jesus. Look at the opportunity you're getting. Just complain a little bit about how bad it was. Before long, you may be getting to talk about the Lord to someone. You see, we're praying for those opportunities that, that this mystery of Christ in verse 4 he says that I may make it manifest as I speak. That they might see this gospel. They might see this good news. They might understand that yes, this thing is real. Real enough to see. Real enough to believe. We learned about spiritual armor, trying to teach kids about real armor and the spiritual armor. It's invisible, but it's just as real. The things God has given us to protect us. You may not see God, but this salvation, this God who speaks to us, this Savior who is risen, we need to be ready to testify He is real. 
You ask me how I know he lives? He lives within my heart. I serve a risen laser, Savior, and he's in the world today. Be praying for opportunities to speak up for Christ. Here's another thing we do now to realize we need those people outside the church. As we're praying for opportunities, we're also praying for wisdom and communicating with them. Pastor, what if I mess it up? What if they ask a question I don't understand the answer to? What if I, what if I, what if I? Okay. Guess what? I can't help you that much. So ask the Lord instead. Ask the Lord to show you what to say. Ask the Lord to give me wisdom to know when you're giving me a chance, Lord. Give me the courage and the boldness to speak up. Let me know. And, and you know what Jesus said? Don't get worried when you get taken before judges and magistrates because of your faith. The Holy Spirit will give you what you need to say. What if that promise is still true? I haven't had training. I don't know. What, what if, what if? What if the Holy Spirit is still working? What if He really is inside you? What if the next thing that comes out of your mouth, I don't know where that came from, Lord. What if He does know where it came from? Because He put it there. What if we open up ourselves to the Holy Spirit and just keep praying, Lord, help me communicate. Verse, verse 6 here, 5 and 6. Walk in wisdom towards those who are outside, redeeming the time. Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. Praying for that opportunity and pray for wisdom and how to talk to them. In verse 5, walk in wisdom towards those who are outside your body. Making good use of the time, redeeming the time. That's what we mean. You know, hey, use your excuse for being tired from Bible school. Might open up a conversation. You never know. Verse 6, Salty language. Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt. See, in the Bible, salty language was a good thing. It wasn't just what sailors did. Salt was seasoning. Salt was a preservative. Salt was always seen as a positive. You are the salt of the earth. So let your language be salty. Yet let your language be influential for Christ. Let your language be the kind that preserves and encourages and builds up instead of tears down. Salt could help heal a wound, so let your language be the kind that helps bind up the wounds, helps clean them out a little bit. You don't have to be ugly. You don't have to be rude. What if you just let the Holy Spirit lead in how you talk to these folks? Again, I don't know what to say. What if He does? Open your heart and your mind up. Be in prayer for those opportunities. On the way to work, as you're praying, Lord, if, if the opportunity is there, if it's your will, Lord, give me the opportunity. Tell me what to say. Teach me how to walk rightly with these folks. To notice that someone's having a bad day and being able to say, hey, let me pray with you. To notice that someone is struggling and, man, they're just talking about, hey, I heard your wife is having surgery. I heard your child's sick. Man, I'm, I'm sorry the car is broke down. Let me pray with you. You might get that extra to be able to get it fixed. Maybe people at work just need to know that someone's praying for them. Maybe people in your class. We had the testimony a few weeks ago at the end of April. We had that welding competition out in the parking lot. And they let me go out there and pray with the kids. And someone told uh, the leader of the, the, the organization, said to him, man, that's the first time someone's prayed for me. And really, there was 12 of them standing there, the seniors, and, and we just prayed over them. You have no idea what it might mean to someone. That moment, God give me wisdom in just letting them know somebody cares. Somebody loves you. Somebody is with We need those people. They are our lifeblood. Even if they're gay, even if they're from the wrong political party, even if they live a lifestyle that is opposed to you and what you believe in, they need Christ also. You ain't got to worry about straightening them out. You let Jesus do that. You let Jesus work the work in Him, them He wants to work. They need us just like we need them. We need to be able to love that which is different than us. We need to be able to reach out to them and let them know that Christ is for everyone. He may not leave you like you were, Praise the Lord, but He loves every one of us. So pray for that wisdom then. Pray for opportunities. Pray for knowing what to say because we need those people outside. 
It fulfills the mission God gave to us. It fulfills the purpose while we're sitting here on the corner of Weber between Dublin and, 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 and Shannon Boulevard. While we're so close to so many schools and apartments that God put us here to serve Him. And then there's those people that are inside the church. And we need them, those who are partners. Let me back that up for a second. We need these people inside the church. That's you and me. That's the good folks, right? The ones we feel comfortable talking with. But we need each other in this church. He goes on, he starts in verse 7, all these names. In this list of names, you're going to find out there's a slave who's escaped, but is going to get sent back to his master. You're going to find out there's another prisoner. In this list of names here are two guys who wrote two of your Gospels. There is also a prayer warrior. There is a guy who's a friend, a close friend of Paul, who actually, when Paul was facing death, he mentions, this guy turned his back on me and on Jesus and just walked away. We're going to have all kinds in the church, aren't we? We're going to have those who really excel, those who are kind of average, those who are faithful, those who pick up the ball and run, those who do the best they can, and every once in a while there's going to be those who turn and walk away. That's church. Let's start. What kind of friends did he have? Who do we need in the church? First off, there were partners in the ministry. These are people who they want to serve. You put that sign-up sheet for First Blessing Shoes in August, or you put that sign-up sheet for Vacation Bible School or other things we need help in, and man, their name is slapped on there. Tychicus, he's a guy that pops up several times in the New Testament. He's always carrying messages for Paul. He's like his messenger guy. He's like his email guy. When Paul wants to get a message or a letter delivered, Tychicus was also often involved. I'm sending to him for that very purpose, that he could tell you what's going on, he says in verse 8. Verse 9, you see the name, a big name, Onesimus. You see him in another little book in the Bible called Philemon. Onesimus was a slave. Onesimus was a slave who ran away. Onesimus was a slave who ran away and met Jesus. Met Paul, maybe some others. He came to know Christ as his Savior. There's a little book, as we said, called Philemon. Philemon is Onesimus' master. The purpose of that letter is Paul is sending Onesimus back to his master to say to him, Look, I know you got every right to keep this guy as a slave, but let me tell you something. He changed. He came to Christ, and he's been very helpful to me. He's been a partner in my ministry. He's been useful. Would you set him free so he could work with me? You're a brother in Christ who owns a slave, and we 21st century guys are going, that's a contradiction. So he makes the request, let this guy go. Here is Onesimus, and actually Philemon is also from a town called Colossae, which is where Colossians has taken place at. So it's kind of like we're all back home, and Colossians, and and so you get ready, because I'm going to see Onesimus back. But he was a guy that, despite his past, despite his limitations, found usefulness to God. There was another one in this little list here, Aristarchus. Well, not Aristarchus. Uh, but anyway, these two guys, Tychicus and Onesimus, partners in the ministry, serving with him, not always on the front line, not big-time gospel writers or anything like that, but faithful people who serve the ministry of Christ. Then there are the comforters. He talks about in verses 10 through and 11, Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner. I told you there was a prisoner. (laughs) Aristarchus is in the cell cell next to him. He sends greetings. And there's also Mark, the cousin of Barnabas. Mark, there's a name you ought to know. Mark was a guy that went with Paul on one of his first missionary journeys. And um, he got about halfway into it. And he was a cousin of a guy named Barnabas, who was Paul's right-hand guy. Anyway, uh, Paul, the next time he went on a journey, said, let's not take Mark. He kind of bailed out on us last time. And uh, you're thinking, oh, that Mark, he must be an immature little guy. Well, Mark, Mark landed on his feet. Mark wound up being useful to Paul, but also Mark wrote a book in the Bible called The Gospel of Mark. He wrote one of the histories of Jesus, one of the stories in Jesus. There they call the Gospel of Mark. Mark is a great example of a guy who had a shaky start, 
but grew. And God kept using him. And later on, when Paul is once again high unto death, he says, bring that guy Mark with you. He is good help. And then we come down and there's a guy named Jesus who is also called Justice. They are my fellow workers, these guys. They are of the circumcision, that means they're Jewish, and they have proved to be a comfort to me. This is important to us because we need brothers and sisters like this also. Partners in ministries for serve, but man, we also need those brothers and sisters who know how to give a hug, who know that when someone has died, they know what you need who know that when you are down on your luck, they're the one that can bounce there and tell you, hey, buck up, I'm here with you. We'll walk through this together. When you are in prison, I am sure, having people who are a comfort are a great blessing. Having people in our church who are better at comforting, who are better at lifting you up, who are better at sitting there and sharing tears with you, who are better at laughing with you, who are better at doing all those things you need in that moment where you are down in the dumps. They are a vital part of God's church, and we need you. And praise the Lord if you're one of them. And then there's a third bunch here, the inner circle. These people are close to Paul. We see them popping up several times throughout his ministry. The first one here in verse 12 is Epaphras. It is one of you, a bondservant of Christ, greets you, laboring fervently for you in prayers, that you may stand perfect and complete in the will of God. This guy, Epaphras, was one of Paul's co-workers. He's also a prayer warrior. What is he doing? It says in verse 12, He is always laboring fervently for you in prayers. We like to pray at our church. We saw we like to stop in the middle of it and have a prayer meeting. We pray of our little prayer meeting on Wednesday nights in the Bible study starting at 6.30 if you would like to join us for that. This week is potluck. Come early at 6. You can have dinner. But we have a, a, a prayer meeting. Why do we do that? We don't want to just pray for who's sick and needs to be healed. We also want to pray for who needs to get right with God. Who's going through str struggling relationships. Who needs a big turnaround in their life. We need to be a people of prayer. And there are people like Epaphras out there, man. And he is praying for you. And look what he's praying for. He's praying fervently for you that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. What's he praying for? He's praying that when God looks at you, he sees the total package. One of my children standing strong in faith, wearing their spiritual armor. One of my children standing strong in the faith, speaking my word, struggling with the issues they got to struggle with, but they are standing. They are in God's will. They are serving him. They are doing the best they can with what they've got, and they may be imperfect, but God is loving them up and down. Do you pray for people like that? Do you ever pray that, man, my brothers and sisters at church, that, Lord, they are standing right before you in your will, perfect in the sense of complete, got everything we need. Do we pray for each other like that? Heal the sick, help them get better, yes, but also that our spiritual state is right with God. Can that really make a difference, Pastor? All I know is that's what this guy's praying for, and it made it in the Bible. It ought to be good for you and me, too. So there's Epaphras, the prayer warrior. I bear him witness, verse 13, that he has a great zeal for you and those who are in Laodicea. Then our next inner circle guy, here's a name you ought to know. He probably rode around with Paul a lot. Luke, the beloved physician. Luke hooks up with Paul in the book of Acts. And we're not so sure that traveling around with Paul wasn't how Luke heard a lot about Jesus and the Holy Spirit moved upon him to write a gospel also. Like we said, we had John Mark, now we've got Luke, a guy in the church who is very valuable. My goodness, it's the longest gospel out of the four of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. God's going to use doctors. God's going to use lay people. God's going to use realtors. God's going to use teachers and bus drivers. God's going to use mechanics and carpenters. God's going to use stay-at-home parents. God's going to use retired. And God's going to use the, the, the disabled. God's going to use every one of us to serve His kingdom. We move on. And then there's that last guy, Demas. Yeah. 
We just finished a, a couple months ago on our Wednesday night studying the second Timothy, which was the last book this guy Paul wrote in the New Testament. And this guy Demas pops up. He was a good helper until there came a day. Paul was sitting in prison, and I guess Demas had been through too much too often. And Paul says of Demas, he has left me, having loved this present world. Instead of being in love with Christ, Demas is the one that kind of finishes poorly. He gave up. It was too much. I'm not saying we won't see Demas in heaven. I am saying some of us feel that way sometimes. That's not how I want to be remembered. I don't want you to be remembered that way. As the one who is faithful, but then man, you got into a mess and you just gave up. Jesus is too strong to let you give up. He wants to hang on to you. He will lift you up. He will carry you through. He will get you on. In church, we often see sometimes those who go through things, things happen to them, stuff, life, all of that, and we lose them. We miss you. But we need to know also, we all need to know, we have dry spells, we have struggles, but the Lord has not let up on you. Demas may have given up, but Jesus doesn't. Jesus will not give up on you. Jesus has not abandoned you. As you go through the struggle you're going through and wondering, is it all worth it? Look, hang on to Him to the end. The one thing children need to see, not only in their parents, their grandparents, and even the people at their church, is that consistency. So many kids are growing up where mom and dad are up and down, in and out, together and not together, in all those situations. They need to see consistency. Not consistently perfect, just through the ups and downs of life, this family stays together. Through the struggles and the vacations and the ball games, this family stays close to the Lord and in His church. This family stays affiliated with the family of God, and as we go through life, through health, through better, through worse, we still stick to Jesus. There's value in that. I'm not getting much out of it right now, Pastor. Okay. But you know, right now, my, my lawn isn't getting a whole lot of water out of me. But that lawn is hanging in there. It's going to rain again. And my water bill will get down enough where I can water it again. Well, actually, it's not the water bill that's the problem right now. It's the light bill. can't pay the water bill because of the light bill. Right? You're in that situation. But one day the rain comes. One day refreshment comes. One day it won't be 118 heat index out there. Jesus is like that. We go through the, we go through the dry spell. Instead of giving up, keep praying that the rain comes. Keep praying that He'll refresh you. A fresh touch, a fresh word, a fresh moment. This church is about 115 years old or so. Actually, it's about a hundred, yeah, about getting, we're getting on up there. It's had its ups, it's had its downs. They're still here. People have come, people have gone, people have lived, people have been born, people have grown up, people have died. But through it all, the ministry of Jesus Christ keeps going. And unlike Demas, we need to realize that. That I can be a part of that. Maybe I feel insignificant, maybe I feel like I'm struggling. You're still in part of the family. You may not be having life feeling like you're bearing much fruit. You are still part of the family, and this church needs you. We need each other. We sing that song earlier, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. What keeps you and me together in Travis Baptist Church is Jesus Christ. He's the missing piece. He's the one that will hold us together and will hold our lives together, will keep us seeking out new opportunities. And through Jesus, we will also be able to reach out to those around us and revealing that this family wants to keep growing. This family wants to keep reaching. This family wants to keep blessing and being what God has called this church to be. So as we conclude Colossians, let's remember, this great Jesus that we started out with in chapters 1 and 2 comes down to where he wants to reach down and minister through each and every one of us with all our differences and uniquenesses. Jesus is you in his church.
to be part of his family, to be protected by his armor, but also to be bold in saying, I am not ashamed to be a child of Christ. When you go through life and loss, when you go through joys and sorrows, if you're like me, you got your, your nearest family, except for your wife and kids, is a long way off. Except for this family right here on the corner of Weber and Dublin. So we turn to our church family for a lot. Be there for us and be part of it, all right? And maybe today we stirred something up in you. Is that something you're looking for in life? That missing piece, you're looking, I want to belong somewhere. I want to belong to something that's bigger than me. Belong to Jesus. Belong to his church. Jesus Christ came and died in our place. We're all sinners. We've all failed. We all come short. He died and he rose again on that third day. Because he rose out of that grave, you and I can know, yes, we have eternal life. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever would believe in him would not perish, would not be condemned to hell, but have everlasting life in heaven with him. That could be true for you today. What does it take? We learned it during Bible school this week. Salvation is a gift that one only has to ask. God is saying to you, would you like to be part of this family? All you have to do is, can I be? I'd love to be. John chapter 1 verse 12, to as many as received him, he gave the power to become the children of God. That could be you right here, right now. We're going to pray. After we pray, we're going to be singing. And maybe if you're saying, yes, I want to become one of God's children, come down here and tell me about it while everyone else is singing. We're not going to embarrass you. I just want to pray with you about that. We'll follow up with it. But right here, right now, could be the time. From the depth of your heart, you just tell Jesus, I'm ready, Lord. I'm tired of my life. I am ashamed of my sin and the mistakes I've made, the disobedience. I'm ready for something new. Jesus, I need you to come into my life. And what do we say? As many as receive him, he gives the power to become the children of God. Right here, right now. Let's pray. We, and we are grateful, so grateful, for all you've done for us. And we're praying right now that you help each one of us realize how valuable we are in your kingdom. Whether it's in this local church or another, that you've got a place for us. You've got a purpose for us. So we're praying, Lord, help us find that missing piece in our life. Jesus, would you fill that spot and lead me into that congregation? If it's here, Lord, we are so excited. But maybe today, maybe today, Lord, you're speaking to someone, someone that needs you desperately. Let them know that today they could take the step of saying, yes, Jesus, I believe. I believe in you. I believe you're God the Son. I believe you lived a sinless life. And when you died on that cross, you took my punishment. Amen. And when you rose in the grave, you gave me hope for eternity. And all you ask, Lord, is that I believe. That I'm ready to leave that life behind and follow you. Here I am, Lord. I want to follow you. Lord, if they're praying that, give them the courage to maybe tell me about it that we might pray together. Give them the courage to take that step. And to the others here today, Lord, that are your children, or maybe they've been through going through things, just let them know they are a valuable piece of your family. They belong with your people. We pray these things in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So we're going to sing, and if you want to come down to this altar and pray, or if you want me to pray with you, come. If you're ready to take that step that I mentioned, that today you are ready to come and, and, and claim Christ as your Savior, come and let me pray with you about that, all right? Let's all stand. And as we sing, you're invited to come. The cross upon which Jesus died is a shelter in which we can hide and its grace so free is sufficient for me and deep is its fountain as wide as the sea there's room at the cross
cross for you. There's room at the cross for you. Though millions have come, there's still room for one. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. Thank you all so much for being part of our service today and for worshiping with us. I hope God has spoken to your heart and you, you leave here ready and knowing that, you know what, God's got his hand on me and he's going to work through me this week, all right? So let's be in much prayer for that. Um, as I said earlier, um, I will be with you next Sunday and then after that we got the vacation, then after that I got the surgery and uh, so it'll be a while after that. So pack the house next Sunday, all right? Um, <laughs> But uh, be in prayer for me and my family and what we'll be going through. Um, also want to remind you, we've got deacons meeting this afternoon at 5. We've got uh, a business meeting at 6.30. Also, we got the potluck and the card signing this week on Wednesday, all right? And Larry Sorrell, would you dismiss us in prayer, please, sir? Uh, church, play, pray with me, please. Uh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for the blessing that you have given us today, that we were allowed to come into this house, Lord, to tell you how much we love you, that you are the wonderful and mighty God that you are for all of us. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done for us. We ask you to be with the ones, continue to be with the ones that are sick, ill, going through procedures. And Lord, especially for our shepherd, our pastor, Lord, who's fixing to go through a procedure. Be with him, Lord. Make it a quick recovery, Lord, so that we may get him back sooner. And Lord, uh, Yes, it's that time of year, Lord. We do need rain. And uh, we ask you to be with us now as we leave this place. We ask you to come with us as when we come back the next appointed time. And Lord, forgive us where we fail you. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen.